Hey guys, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today we're going to cover social media and the future of biomed. But uh, first you're probably thinking, who am I <laughs> and why am I giving this presentation? Well guys, uh, I've been an 18, 18 and a half year biomed. I've been a biomed during wartime. I've been a biomed during peacetime. I've been a biomed as a civilian for about a decade. I've been around the block a few times and I have had some excellent mentorship from some guys. Some of them are no longer here, unfortunately, but I have decided to continue this project because I'm honoring the people that taught me things. All right. This is a way of preserving that knowledge for posterity. It's true. So <laughs> how did I get started with YouTube? Well, almost exactly three years ago, I made one video one video and it was about isolated power systems and how an isolated power system protects people from electrical shock. I used that video to help train the local electricians who didn't completely understand how an isolated power system worked and come to find out it was able to convey the message quite well and it had a very positive reception. So I just continued making videos again and again. I just, I got so many topics to talk about. I just continued on and now it's been almost three years. So in the beginning, it was just one video to help train some local people. And now I have uh, pretty close to, I don't know, 5,500 subscribers, 5,500 people and over a quarter of a million views. It's, it's been absolutely phenomenal. I have had hundreds of people write me emails from almost every single country that I could imagine. It's true. And I didn't even know some of these countries existed. I, I had to look them up. I swear to God. And it has been absolutely awesome. The reception from the biomed community has been overwhelmingly positive. And I was thinking all this time that they're going to shoot me down and that they're going to criticize me and ridicule me publicly. None of that has happened at all. So, there are some lessons I have learned from this whole thing. Number one lesson that I've learned is that young people use social media. Way more than older people, that's probably a given. But young people, they will look up a problem rather than get on tech support and sit there with tech support for an hour. They will look up the problem, they'll Google it, and they will probably be more successful at finding a solution more quickly because of that. The other thing that I have learned is that biomed is an international career. Guys, there are biomeds across this entire world. They're working on pretty much the same equipment and they're having the exact same problems throughout this entire world. And I have been very humbled by hearing some of those stories from some of those biomeds all around the world. So guys, biomed is an international career. You can move anywhere in the world and do biomed and you will probably be pretty successful at it. So those are the two lessons I've learned. Now let's get into social media and biomed and all the different avenues that I can think of. You can probably think of a couple more, but these are the ones that I can come up with at this moment. So guys, the number one one <laughs> I'm going to mention is going to be LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a professional networking site, but people share media on there. They share news stories, educational clips, all sorts of stuff they're sharing on LinkedIn. And you know, one of the best things about LinkedIn is that you can talk to CEOs of companies on LinkedIn. I talk to medical doctors, experts in their field all the time, and it is absolutely fantastic because where else in the world could you ever do that? LinkedIn, it's such a wonderful tool, but there is a caveat. Guys, LinkedIn kind of tracks what you do, okay? So when you are on there, don't get involved with politics, stay as neutral as possible, and then just do what you got to do and, and present yourself well because the whole world can see it. All right. So that's LinkedIn. Number two is going to be Facebook groups. Facebook groups. I get it. Uh, a lot of the younger people are not going to Facebook to look up problems, but Facebook groups are an excellent way to localize a community, either localize regional or localize based on a specialty. Like you could have Houston area biomeds, or you could have the Florida biomeds. That is a regional. Or you could have uh, networking, medical networking engineers, or you could have uh, linear accelerator engineers as a Facebook group where you could, you know, 
intermingle and discuss your problems and solutions and stuff. That's the wonderful thing about Facebook groups, but there is a pretty big downside to Facebook groups. You have to search for them and you have to search pretty hard. That's the thing about it is your keywords of how you search for that group. They're going to be a little bit difficult, but guys, if you find a group and you stick with it and you make it an active group, it's going to be one heck of a tool. So that's the Facebook groups. The next one is the Discord server. There is a BMET Discord server out there, and there are some excellent guys. Some of these guys have a lot of experience that are on there, and you can scroll through the history of Discord. It's got its pluses and minuses, just like everything else in this world, but Discord, you can get almost instantaneous answers. Almost none of the other forums can do that as well. Discord is such an excellent source for uh, getting help instantly. Let's say you have a problem. You can put it out there. You can have a dozen people searching for a solution to your problem right now. And uh, that's just one of the beautiful things about Discord. It's in its infancy. But uh, as people get on there and they spend more time logged in, it will get to be a better and better service. That's a promise. So that's Discord. The next one is going to be MedWrench. A lot of you guys have heard about it. MedWrench, the forums, there are... So there, there's the problem solving side of MedWrench and then there's also the instructional side. So there are blogs and stuff on MedWrench which can tell you about trends in the technology sector. It could even be about the latest NFPA 99. You never know what's gonna be on there. MedWrench, the forum section is gonna be really good. The other side of the forums though, the troubleshooting side is where people ask questions. And I tell you right now, there are so many resourceful people that will get on there and try and answer your question and they will give you links to solutions like maybe to the user manual they'll tell you what page it's on you never know guys i have seen such phenomenal answers on medwrench forums so if you don't currently have a medwrench profile set up get on there and set yourself up because it's going to be absolutely fantastic htm jobs htm jobs is a social media site where people can find HTM jobs. <laughs> I know it's kind of self-explanatory, but guys, just like on um, Indeed and some of those other places, you can get in and you can make a, a profile. You build a profile based on your specialties and your skill sets. And then you can go out and search for jobs and apply for those jobs because you just filled in your resume, right? HTM jobs is an excellent place if you're looking for jobs or resume slash professional development information. Go check it out, guys. It's a pretty good site, and it's kind of new, so give it a little bit of time, but it's growing, and more people are getting on there, and more jobs are being posted on there. It's going to be like the central site for HTM jobs. I know. It's in the name, but <laughs> so HTM jobs. Uh, product slash OEM forums. Almost every manufacturer out there has a forum of their own to try and solve problems on their brand of equipment. And sometimes there's generic forums, like there might be uh, radiology engineers forums or something like that. And it's, it's not going to be necessarily attached to an OEM, but those forums are out there. And usually the way I find them is I, I'll type in like Siemens error 3000 error code. And that's when these forums pop up and you can dig through them. These forums are all out there. Guys, if you find them and it's relevant to what you do as a career field, Get on there and see if you can help some people out by answering some questions. Those are excellent resources. And the good thing about forums is those answers are saved for posterity, just like MedRanch. If you ever do a search in Google for an error code or something, you're probably going to pull an old MedRanch uh, forum post. And you're going to probably find an answer on there or a, a good explanation why you can't find an answer. So... That's product slash OEM forums. They're out there and they're very numerous. I can't even start picking them out because there's so many of them out there and they've come and gone over the years, but they're still on the net. Almost all of them are still live. So just Google what you're looking for and usually these forums are going to pop up. And the last one is obviously going to be YouTube, guys. YouTube is becoming one of the most paramount sources of information because there are all different ways of instructing somebody on how to do something. And each YouTube presenter instructs a little differently, just like teachers in a school. People learn differently. And sometimes you're going to learn more if you listen to this person or you're going to listen to that person. Either way, there's going to be all different types of people on YouTube 
Some of them are going to be doctors. Some of them are going to be engineers. Some of them are going to be scientists. Some of them are going to be yahoos like me. <laughs> but guys, there are all sorts of people on YouTube. You can learn how to put in a heart valve if you wanted to. I swear to God, if you want to learn how to graft some skin, if you want to learn uh, about interocular surgery, there are so many resources on YouTube. And I'm just trying to contribute to it just as anything else. But guys, nothing would make me more happy is if many of you guys start contributing your stuff because everybody has a story. Everybody has a story. And they, everybody's got something that they can teach somebody else. So the more people that participate, the wider this knowledge base grows and the greater it, our career field is going to be. All right. So those are the main social media and biomed forums. Now, here's something that a lot of people haven't considered. Social media and jobs. Yeah, social media is coming to be the number one way that people can find jobs. Now, when I talk about jobs, most people are thinking OEM, hospital, third-party repair. But guys, that is not. Although a lot of those guys are on social media, all right? Like I said, with LinkedIn, you can contact CEOs, directors of biomed departments in hospitals. You can find them on LinkedIn. That's an excellent source. But guys... I'm here to tell you that there's a whole nother genre of jobs out there that most biomeds have not even considered. Now, the reason I know about this is because I have been partaking in this stuff and I've been inundated with work. I'm talking about side jobs, guys. Side jobs. Independent contractors. It's going to be a thing. It is the future of biomed, guys. There are going to be independent biomed contractors in the future because you guys have all sorts of skill set and every single minute of your time is worth money. I don't know if you know that or if you've even considered the possibility, but every single minute of your time, if you've been trained on anesthesia machines, ventilators, medical lasers, microscopes, whatever it is, if you've been trained on it or you're really proficient at it, your time is worth money to somebody else. Now, there's two different ways that you can be an independent contractor and be a biomed. One of them is going to be the official way, and that's going to be with a 1099. A 1099 form is basically a contractor form where you're going to fill out your social security number or your tax ID, and you're going to put your information in there, and that 1099 form is going to get filed with an official company, a contractor, who bids on jobs. This is the part that a lot of people don't understand. There are hundreds of companies out there that are bidding on medical jobs all around the United States. It's happening all the time. There are contracts that are popping up for bids constantly. And the only thing that is keeping people from efficiently managing those contracts is talent. So you have two options to be part of that talent pool. One of them is a 1099 form and the other one is under the table. If you get paid under the table, it's up to you to claim those on your taxes, but you can still get paid under the table. That's completely up to you, man. But 1099 form or under the table. I have been paid both and it has been phenomenal. So here's how it works. They bid on these jobs. And then what we really need, I've been trying to talk to the people from MedWrench and from HTM Jobs to have a talent pool tab, okay? Because let's say HTM jobs, you build your profile in HTM jobs and it's basically like filling out your resume. You're going to type in your skill set, your modalities and stuff like that. It would be so nice to have a little check on there where you can say, add me to the talent pool. And then at the very top of the page near all your browsing buttons, there was one button that says talent pool where people can go in and search based on modality and location to find people that are open to do side work. Wouldn't that be crazy? If there's a little checkbox in your profile that says, I'm open to side work, please add me to the talent pool. Stamp that. It would be awesome because guys, if you are good at medical lasers or something, you have your own test equipment and you want to possibly be considered for some of these contracting jobs, they can search you based on your modality, your specialty and your region. See guys, that is one of the detractors to efficient healthcare maintenance, okay? The detractor is that 
there are talent, but they have to fly them around the country in order to solve this. Believe it or not, guys, I've been asked if I would be willing to fly to Alaska. Mind you, I'm in Houston right now. I've been asked if I would be interested in flying to Alaska later on in the week to go and solve some problems with some sterilizers. I kid you not. You think that's the most efficient manner? I guarantee somebody up in Alaska can fix sterilizers, but the problem is finding the talent is the hardest thing. So if we could find a forum where people can be browsable based on your modality, based on your specialty and your region, then we could solve some of these problems about timely and efficient contracting. Hell, if, if there's options here in the Houston area and somebody wants some surgical stuff taken care of, <laughs> sign me up, man. Let's do this. So right now I got stuff that's shipped to my house. Uh, at least once a week, I get stuff shipped to my house where I, I go and calibrate it, I repair it, whatever. And the thing is, is that's all a side job. So you do that with a 1099 and uh, then they keep track of it. So guys, that's a whole side business that most biomeds don't understand because they don't understand that their time is worth money. So if you got some free time or think about this, let's say you don't want to work nine to five anymore. I can reduce my uh, cost of living, no problem. If I can reduce my cost of living and only work three days a week on contracts, I wouldn't mind sleeping in and drinking coffee in the morning. That's for darn sure, okay? So that's a whole nother line of work, guys, that's coming up. It will be a thing. Is going to be independent contractors, and social media is going to be how those contracts are going to be found and solved. So guys, the other thing I want to talk to you about is social media and training, because there are so many different things that we can do to improve ourselves as biomed using social media. So let's say you have core competencies for biomed. It is a requirement that there are some sort of core competencies and you're keeping track of them, right? But the hard part is keeping the training uniform and finding the time to do the training, let alone somebody specialized enough to, to do the training for your people. What a better way to do it than something like a video, right? So your core competencies for biomed could be things like soldering. You could do electrical basics. You could do videos on how to run your test equipment. I've done all those type of videos, guys. You could do videos on the latest regulation, like the latest NFPA 99, 101, or 103. Those are all things that could be easily solved through social media, things like YouTube. We could, we could maintain a training schedule using YouTube videos. You know it's standardized. You can actually keep track of whether or not they watched it. There's, there's lots of things to like about this. But think about this. There's another area of training that people might not have considered. How many of you guys have gone to an OEM training someplace and you spent the first day or two covering something like theory of operation or maybe nomenclature or something like that? Those are prerequisites to the class, but they usually take the first day or two of class and that's wasted time. That type of training could be done before you ship off to that school. And, and companies like GE, they've been doing this for a while. There's prerequisites for paid training that could be solved. Save your time for real troubleshooting and real hands-on experience training. Whereas the lecture, so much of the lecture does not have to be done on site. You can do that through PDFs. You can do that through social media links. Paid training, guys. Let's not do it all on site. <laughs> let's, let's get some of those prerequisites taken care of before you even fly out to, to do the training in person. Let's say there's an item specific type of training. How about what is a pneumatic tourniquet? Some people really don't know what a pneumatic tourniquet is. I mean, we all start with little to no knowledge in the beginning anyway, right? So if I need to teach somebody about what is a pneumatic tourniquet, I can go on YouTube and I can pop up many videos on what it is, how it's used, and they, they go through the theory of operation, they go through sometimes how it's repaired, or let's say how to set up a Belmont FMS 2000. I remember this one particularly because a long time ago, it was a nurse setting up a Belmont FMS 2000 that taught me how to set it up years ago. So I did a video on the Belmont FMS 2000 and we got a little more into detail on the technical side of it, but 
If you don't know what a rapid infuser is, you can go online, you can watch a video, and in five to 10 minutes, bam, you are trained and you have a general knowledge of what that device is and how to set it up. How fantastic is that? Another thing that we could train on is new technologies. This is obviously gonna be such a thing, guys. How many trade shows have people gone to the trade show and they're trying to sit there and tell you about the new technology that's something you've never heard of before, but here they are showing it at a trade show. Whereas they could have a QR link and it could go to a YouTube video or something that shows you a graph or shows you how the technology works. I'm telling you guys, new technologies, seeing it on a video over social media, shared through social media. I mean, let's say Philips has a new 1.5 Tesla MRI and it uses 7.5 liters of helium. They share that link of their new technology across LinkedIn, across their Facebook page. I happen on it. I study up on what that thing is and because of their social media post. I now know that there is a almost helium free Philips MRI system. How crazy is that? I learned something new about a new technology because of social media. It happens every day. Let's say a company uh, called Order, a company called Order, they have a very complex and fantastic product that snoops across your medical network and it categorizes and lists all the devices that are touching your medical network. And you can see how many medical networked devices are out there. It's software revision, MAC address, IP address, where it's at according to the Wi-Fi hotspot that it's touching. And then you can, you can refresh it in about five minutes and it will give you a whole new list of where it's at and uh, what's touching the network. Such an interesting product. I know about that because Order was making some social media posts. A new technology. And uh, because I was able to dig on my own, I was able to learn more on my own time. There's another thing that I've learned recently, and that's a capnography testing system called Smart Tank. It's true. Their social media, they're getting a little bit better at it, but it is such an amazing piece of technology. And I have, I'm going to be doing a video on it soon, as soon as I can get my hands on it, to be honest. <laughs> But uh, the smart tank is such an interesting system because it has all the different types of capnography devices listed in its database, which you can update. You select a device and then you, it tells you what type of gas to put in the back because different devices take different calibration gas. And then it, it handles the flow of that gas. It handles step-by-step -step instructions on the, the screen that tell you how to calibrate that specific model it is such an interesting device, guys. I learned about that because of social media. It's true. First, I seen it at a trade show, and that's kind of sad because I should have learned about it on social media. So I had all these questions by the time I got to the trade show. But I have seen links to it on social media, and I've been able to dig down. And that's how I can tell you guys about it is because I did my research on it after the fact. What an amazing device. Social media gets the story out there so everybody can see it very quickly and very efficiently. That's the truth. Now let's talk about using social media to solve problems. It's true, guys. Social media, the, probably one of the top things that we can do with social media is solve problems as a collective. I'm only so smart. You guys are only so smart. But together, together, we can really solve some real problems, guys. There are hundreds and hundreds of years worth of people surfing the internet hanging out on these websites. And these guys are real smart dudes. So you ask questions or you propose a solution and you help them craft the solution with you and you will get a good product. You will get a good design solution. So there are several ways that we can do this on social media. One of them is the forums of knowledge. Now I talked about it a little bit before. There are several sources of, of forums and these are excellent guys, absolutely excellent. I use social media to find obsolete parts. It's true. And a lot of you guys do too because I'm out there on social media all the time. And if you need like plastics, if you need some sort of control board or something, if you need all sorts of stuff, they're asking, they're trading. There's like a whole black market out there of stuff that's being traded amongst biomeds. And it's all being done on social media. It's absolutely fantastic. 
The OEMs would love for you guys to get rid of this equipment, but guess what? We're going to keep it around because you guys are able to be resourceful and use social media. Locating third-party vendors. Now, this doesn't have to be obsolete equipment. That's one of the things, but it doesn't have to be because companies will say all the time, we don't support that anymore. You got to buy another one, but maybe somebody used to work on those devices and they're still available to help you out. Or maybe the OEM wants to charge you a flat rate, absolutely ridiculous amount to PM a device, but you know somebody that can do it as a third party. I see all the time people saying, hey, can anybody calibrate this type of device? Or hey, I've got this device over here. Um, I need somebody that can repair it and uh, calibrate it. Anybody able to do that? I see those kind of posts all the time and they are getting answers and people are getting real solutions. So we can do it for forums of knowledge because like I said, there's a lot of smart dudes that have many years of experience and they're all online. We can use it for locating obsolete parts. We can locate third party vendors. Here's one you didn't think of. Solutions during the crisis. Part shortages and lack of supplies, let's say during a natural disaster or during a pandemic. Guys, using social media, we can find these problems and we can get them solved much quicker. I put out a post looking for a um, motherboard to a surgical table just to see if anybody has any. And I had a couple people that spoke up and said, hey, we can help you out. It's absolutely fantastic. If people are down and they're experiencing outages with their hospital, guess what? This last year, we all experienced some hard times, especially with logistics. But if somebody has the capability to assist through social media, through some of those localized Facebook groups and stuff, this is what we can do to help one another. Solutions during crisis. You can help solve some of those during the crisis using social media. How about using social media to scout new talent? As I said earlier, young people use social media. It's their number one thing that they do. You can advertise a career to a new generation. It works because a vast majority of my users are young people. Vast majority. It's like 80% of my viewers are people that are like 25 and under. They use social media. Obviously, that's why they're viewing my stuff. I don't know why, but they are. Um, advertising a career to an experienced generation. That is one you got to think about. I have worked with people that are plumbers, electricians, former business owners. I have worked with people that were auto mechanics and they made excellent biomeds. They're not necessarily younger generation. Some of them were well older than me, but they made excellent biomeds. They didn't even know biomed existed, but we can advertise our career field to those people using social media. It's true. I've got people that write me all the time on LinkedIn about, hey, how do I get into biomed? They're not all young people. Some of them are older people, but guess what? We all know that there's going to be a shortage. Let's do what we can to try and get these guys the right foot in front of the other to get into this career field to help us out. We're going to need the help. That's a fact. Here's something. Imagine you have a team and you need a very specific role to help solve your team. Let's say that there is a surgical team and you need to find somebody that is capable of working on Draeger anesthesia machines. You can use social media to get out there, find somebody that specializes in Draeger anesthesia machines, and you can fill that specific role. Let's say you got a guy that is an expert in fixing Steris autoclaves. Well, I'll tell you what, we can find somebody across social media and you go to them. You find them versus waiting for them to apply to your job. See, that's the thing. Some jobs, you have to be proactive instead of reactive. But using social media, you can sift through hundreds, if not thousands of people. And you can do it efficiently and quickly. So you can advertise a career to a new generation. You can advertise a career to an older generation, both of which have worked out fantastic for me. Or you can use social media to fill a very specific role within your organization. What about regulations and setting the standard and finding best practices? One of the most original uses for social media is when people get into debates 
And when they sit there and they collectively try to find the best way to get something done, we all got to get round about the same job done, but we all do it differently. And some of you guys have some of the most original solutions I have ever even thought of. And because of social media, because of these arguments or because of these uh, discussions that people are doing across social media, we are solving these problems together. And I'll take, for instance, one of the, one of the things that I've learned myself is, you know, the power taps that are across medical facilities? Well, across social media, I was reading up on somebody's solution to this problem because at some hospitals they'll put an actual barcode on it and that itself creates such problems because you got to track the barcode you got to put it in your database you have to keep records on it and all this drama but guess what this one hospital has such a more easy idea what they do is they take a colored dot and when they check it out for electrical safety and a visual inspection they will put a colored dot for that year on the electrical tap and it says that hey this has been in fact touched for this year think about it guys you don't necessarily need to create a work order for every single asset you just have to prove that you touched every single asset these guys were able to do it quickly and efficiently and guess what if you have to dispose of that asset you don't have to remove it from the system number one is tracking down these power strips across the medical facility is an absolute nut job it is crazy, guys, tracking down these power strips across facilities. And by using the dot, you don't necessarily have to do that. Because by doing the dot, if it gets broken, damaged, and whatever, just throw it away. You get a new one, we'll inspect it, we'll put a dot on it. I found that solution over social media, and I thought, my God, that's almost completely genius. Solves many of the problems that I had. That's for darn sure. So there's other things that we can do. We can... Uh, display shop management structure shops have different structure every single one seems to do it differently how crazy is that i have seen discussions on the best way to manage a shop i've seen um how parts ordering and organization works in in different people's organizations it's a lot of organizing <laughs> work order handling and statistics people discuss this all the time what the standard is, what they're capable of doing with X amount of people and their different types of facilities, how work orders are handled and their statistics. People are discussing it all the time on social media and I see some amazing solutions and suggestions on social media. Staff training and promotions. Guys, I see a broad spectrum of how people train their biomeds from not training them at all to yes, we actually have a training folder and we keep up on it every single year. I have seen everything in between and it's really interesting seeing everybody's solution to this problem across social media. And so staff training and promotions. People talk about promoting. I seen something really interesting just a couple days ago. Uh, somebody talking about how people should not get promoted just because of, of tenure at a facility. I completely agree. But seeing people argue that out and the reasoning behind it on social media has been fantastic. Like I said, guys, you have industry experts that are on tap 24-7 on social media. It is absolutely amazing. Just get out there and take a look. There's some real smart dudes out there. Here's one of the main things uh, on social media that I found beneficial to biomeds. Lessons from inspections. It's true. There are certain hot topics that organizations like Jayco will try and hit every single year. And by broadcasting that out there across the entire field, let's say that their high level disinfection systems are gonna be inspected with a fine tooth comb. Let's say dialysis is gonna be inspected with a fine tooth comb. Training records, whatever it is, that hot topic for the year, by you posting what you got hit on with your Jayco inspection or with whatever, Triple AHC, whatever you got, we learn from that and we can better our program. I can take a look at my program and be like, oh, you're right. I do need to improve on those areas. Or I can be like, hey, you got hit on that, but here's how I didn't get hit on that. You know. So lessons from inspections, one of the most valuable resources on social media. Get out there and check it out, guys. It's, there are some real smart dudes out there. One of the things I do have to tell you guys 
This is a more serious area. Warnings about social media, okay? I have been bit a couple times on social media and I try to stay non-partial to everything, okay? And I still get bit, right? Number one lesson about social media, guys. No politics. <laughs> don't, don't do it. Don't get into politics, especially on LinkedIn. Like I said, everything is being tracked on there, guys. But don't get into politics, please. We don't need anything that will divide our career field anymore. I'm talking everything from vaccines to presidential picks to your congressional leaders, your your judge, whatever it is. Don't get into politics. And I'm talking to some of you guys that are out there on LinkedIn that are posting your stuff. It's serious. Do not get into politics. We do not need to be any more divided than we currently are. We as a career field, we're trying to make this a better world. And if you're not trying to make it a better world, you want to sit out there and stir the pot, you probably shouldn't be a biomed. You probably shouldn't be in healthcare at all now that I think about it. Why don't you go work in some gravel pit someplace? Go work a dozer or something. You want to be that, that kind of person. We're about togetherness, and we are completely about solving the world's problems. That's what biomed's about. So no politics, guys. Don't do it. If anything, don't get into politics because somebody out there is not going to agree with you, and it could limit your career. I'm dead serious about that. I'll talk more about that in a moment. Every word you write or post or say can and might hurt you. So if you create your own YouTube channel, if you write blogs, anything, guys, just to let you know, anything you do on social media, treat it as if your boss can and will read that or your future boss can and will read that. All right. I have been bit twice and here is the dead truth. One time I was bit because I put out a video talking about a situation I had with a doctor and how she wanted me to leave the room even though she had propofol dripping inside the medical device. She told me twice to leave and I told her, ma'am, I can't do that. That device has got to come with me. So finally we worked together. She worked on the patient. I cleaned up the mess. I took care of the item. I took it and I did a evaluation on it and everything. But I told that story later that afternoon while I was sitting in my car and I had a doctor contact my hospital HR department which is why my hospital, my current hospital I was working on, for a long time was erased. It was completely erased off of my LinkedIn profile because people contacted my HR department and tried to get me fired for insubordination to a doctor. I'm not lying, dead serious. So that was number one. That was uh, probably a year ago. Now the second time I got bit by social media was actually last week. It was last week. I applied to a very nice hospital here in the Houston area. And believe it or not, I was rejected for the job. Won't even be considered because in one of my videos, I said that I was demoted. Well, here's the thing about that. I have many, many videos out there. You guys probably have a reasonable idea of who I am as a person and how I am as a technician. With so much documentation of my name, you would think that this person, if they heard me say that kind of word, they'd ask the simple question, why? Why did you say that you were demoted? I wasn't really demoted. I'm still a team leader for a biomed team. You know, I wasn't really demoted. I was just moved to a different area. But I was technically removed because I had a problem with a patient safety issue. And it was a very serious issue. And I it was a line in the sand moment for me. And I wasn't going to stand for it. And because of that, I was removed from my team. And I was moved to a new area. Dead serious. It did happen. But I'm just telling you, these type of things do happen. And I was denied a job because I actually used the word demoted in one of my videos. A long time ago, too. It was like 9, 10 months ago, something like that. So somebody's seen that video. They seen that one word, and because of that, I'm no longer eligible for a probably pretty good job at a very nice hospital. Is it? Is it fair? It doesn't have to be fair. It doesn't matter. You know, anybody can get rid of you for any reason. Maybe I dodged a bullet because if you think about it, maybe you don't want to work for somebody that doesn't want your side of the story. I have worked for people like that in the past, where a nurse complains about you or something, 
and you don't get to say what really happened or what happened on your side of the story. They just write you up for it anyway. I've seen that before, and maybe I dodged a bullet this time. But either way, it's a tragedy that you know social media um, was limiting my career. It's something that you have to expect, okay? So guys, if you do get involved with social media, if you do make a YouTube channel or something, just word of advice, don't get into politics. Number two, watch what you say. I'm a very honest person, and if somebody doesn't want to hire me because I said a word like that, well, that's 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 going to be it. I mean, that's going to be the truth. So in closing, guys, social media is absolutely going to be the future of biomed. There is no doubt in my mind it's going to get more and more invasive to your career field. People are going to utilize it to solve problems, find parts, find vendors, to train one another. And all that I ask is that you guys please start utilizing social media a little bit more, get involved with those biomed groups, and partake in some of those forums. When somebody asks a question like, hey, how do I do this? If you know the answer, then get on there. Spend the five minutes or whatever to answer the question because that question might help that person out. But at the same time, it might help out a hundred more people throughout the future. What you do now can and will be saved for the future. So every single video, even this one that you're watching right now, people are going to be seeing this years from now. And they're going to be like, oh, he was so right or he was so wrong. <laughs> Either way, but this video is going to be saved forever. And in closing, I want to say that I'm doing most of these videos because I have had excellent mentors throughout my career. And some of those mentors, like a man named Tony Farmer, I just found out just a little while ago that he passed away very suddenly. But Tony was an awesome biomed. And he taught me so much stuff, but he's not around anymore, all right? And this video right here is a little piece of Tony. I can share that with you. Some of the stuff that he told me how to do, I can share with you guys, and his knowledge will live on because of these videos. So think about that. Please try and get involved with social media and be part of this community. It's growing, and it's growing quite quickly, and uh, let's make this a better place. Thanks for watching, guys.